Kurt Busch is hoping to return to the NASCAR Cup Series really soon. NASCAR could be heading to Amazon. Xfinity Series could be streamed exclusively in 2025. And Alex Bowman could return at Charlotte. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. we got a ton of NASCAR and other motorsports stories discussed here today on the channel. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into those really, really quickly. We'll go ahead and start talking about Sports Clips. As it was announced on Friday afternoon, that Sports Clips is going to sponsor Bobby Labonte and the Asterix, and they return in 2023. Sports Clips has sponsored Bobby Labonte for many, many years, and they also now are going to join the Asterix once again. This car was really, really good last year, and excited to see the Sports Clips is going to be joining the Asterix. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story in today's episode as we're talking about 2311 Racing. As they're teasing an announcement. They put the Caesar out on Friday and they're teasing an announcement for next Sunday. Really, really cool to see that they're going to have an announcement. Not sure what it is. I would have to imagine it's a sponsor regarding to the Tar Heels. That's what they're kind of teasing. Something revolve around Michael Jordan. Nonetheless, so I'm really looking forward to the announcement. And I'm very intrigued to see what the announcement's going to be. Really looking forward to what the announcement could be, to be honest with you. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're going to talk about Landon Huffman and the Crumb family. Now, if you saw some of the racing over the weekend at Hickory Speedway, you saw stuff that went down with Landon Huffman. So after the race, there was a lot of stuff that ended up happening. So Landon Huffman got into Annabeth Crumb. She went up the racetrack, quintessential bump and run. Then after the race, Annabeth just completely drove straight into the back of Landon Huffman, completely nearly doing really stupid stuff and wrecking herself. Remember, the number one rule in stock car racing is learn to wreck somebody without wrecking yourself. And then after Jake Crum, who was a former NASCAR driver who no longer has a NASCAR license for reasons we're not going to get into, he completely went down and beat Robert Huffman for no reason whatsoever. Stomp kicked him, did a lot of really bad stuff. I hope that Landon Huffman and his father file charges, and I hope that Jake Crum and Annabeth Crum never show up to a racetrack once again. What they did was completely unacceptable, and you cannot do that. I really hope Robert Huffman does recover. Landon Huffman did release an update later in the, in the day after the incident. Just completely unacceptable and completely uncalled for. And I really hope that they do something about this because this is ridiculous and just absolutely unacceptable, in my opinion. I really do hope that there's something that they, they can do about this because it's completely unacceptable, in my honest opinion. And now we're going to head to the next story of today's episode as we are talking about Timmy Hill. As it was announced on Sunday that Timmy Hill will drive the 66 for NBA Motorsports this upcoming weekend at Charlotte Motor Speedway in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. NBA Motorsports has not had a lot of starts so far in the 2023 NASCAR Xfinity Series season, and a lot of it is due to the lack of funding and sponsorship as well, and also not having a lot of inventory. They've been trying to make cup starts this year and have not really had the opportunity to do that. So it's really good to see that Timmy Hill is back with NBA Motorsports in the 6-6 team. Hopefully they can have a really good and really strong run this week in Charlotte in the Xfinity Series because they definitely need to have a good run, to be honest with you. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about A.J. Allmendinger. Now, A.J. Allmendinger basically spoke to the media and actually praised Kyle Larson. And he calls him the baddest man on the planet when it comes to race cars. That is a really huge praise coming from A.J. Allmendinger because A.J. Allmendinger, in my opinion, is one of the best road course series and one of the best drivers in the country. And I think a lot of drivers have a lot of respect for Kyle Larson because Kyle Larson is an incredible driver. And he put up a dominant clinic in North Wilkes, bro. And he's going to have the opportunity as well to run the Indianapolis 500 in 2024. And honestly, I think we're here for a treat, especially when it comes to Kyle Larson. I think there's a lot of excitement built around Larson right now. And I think a lot of us are pumped to see what he can do in the 2024 Indianapolis 500. But it's just amazing to see and incredible to see the respect that he has for Kyle Larson. A lot of drivers have a lot of respect. We all saw Carson Osobar call Kyle Larson the GOAT, which is absolutely amazing to see. So nonetheless, great to see the respect that they have for each other and a lot of props to both drivers on the respect, to be honest with you. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we are talking about Matt Kenseth. As it was officially confirmed on Friday that Matt Kenseth will be returning to the Slinger Nationals. Matt Kenseth has raced in the Slinger Nationals many, many years and has won the Slinger Nationals multiple times. I believe including either 2020 or 2021, Matt Kenseth went on to win the Slinger Nationals. Obviously one of the greatest NASCAR drivers of all time and probably one of the greatest race car drivers of all time. I'm really looking forward to see Matt Kenseth get back into running the Slinger or Nationals, I think he's going to be fast. I think he's going to be absolutely a contender, and I think he'll have a really good shot to have a shot 
at the victory. I'm looking forward to it. Really excited to see what Matt Kenseth can do. And nonetheless, I think he will be, for sure, once again, a contender to get the victory. I think he'll have a shot at winning the 2023 Singer Nationals. Obviously, if a certain driver named Ty Majeski isn't in the event, I think Matt Kenseth will have a shot to get the victory. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Matt Crafton versus Carson Hosovar. Now, after the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race at North Wilkes where the Kyle Larson went on to win, Matt Crafton and Carson Hosovar had kind of discussion after the race and they were not happy with each other. And both of them were really frustrated with each other after the race. Matt Crafton kind of called Carson Hosovar an idiot speaking to Noah Lewis. And then Carson Hosovar responded saying he was just a little bit frustrated and he thought it was just probably a misunderstanding. After this ended up happening, though, they both spoke to each other, and they were laughing after the situation, and were talking, and were showing a little bit of respect to each other. That's according to Carson Osborne, what he said in response to Noah Lewis. This is really, really good to see that both of them aren't really frustrated with each other, because I don't think really Carson Osborne did anything wrong. Both of them were having a really good race. Carson finished sixth, and Matt Crafton, I believe, finished seventh, which overall is a really strong run for both drivers. Matt Crafton's kind of struggled the points this season, and Carson Osborne's also, he's had a pretty good year, all things considered. Yes, he's made some mistakes, but Carson's had a lot of pace and a lot of speed in the 2023 season. So overall, in my opinion, I understand the frustration between both drivers because they both probably want to go out there and win. Matt Craft didn't have a race winning truck. Carson probably had a pretty good truck that could have contended. Nonetheless, so it's good to see that both drivers aren't completely frustrated with each other now. It's disappointing that they were frustrated at first, but I'm glad to see now that both drivers are not frustrated with each other and they can move on from the situation. Now focus on Charlotte, which is a one year anniversary of what happened with Carson and Ryan Priest last year when they were battling for the win. So it is what it is overall and hopefully they can move on and focus on the future. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Dale Jr. Now, after the Cars Tour late model race, Dale Jr. basically spoke about the track itself. And Dale Jr. says that if North Wilkesboro would likely need a repave if NASCAR wanted a cup points race next year. Now, we'll get into Marcus Smith's comments later in this episode in regards to that. But Dale Jr. is not completely wrong about North Wilkesboro. North Wilkesboro Speedway has not been repaved since 1981. They kept the original surface. And remember, they originally did not repave the surface. They were going to repave it, turn it into a dirt track, and then repave the surface. But after how good the car store races were in August at the racetrack and how happy the drivers who ran those car store races were, Dale Jr. and the team decided to make a change and not repave the racetrack. And honestly, I think it benefited the racing a little bit. I do understand where Dale Jr. is coming from, and we got to thank Dale Jr. a lot for bringing North Wilkesboro back to the circuit because without Dale Jr., this race, and Marcus Smith for that matter, North Wilkesboro would not have come back. I don't know if I completely agree with repaving the racetrack. I get where Dale Jr. is coming from. I know I said that a second ago, but I do understand where some people are coming from and they want the track repaved, though I like to keep the original character. We'll get into that here in a little bit, talking about Marcus Smith's comments, but it's interesting that Dale Jr. does say they probably should do a repave. I don't know if I completely agree, but I do understand where Dale Jr. is coming from in that sense. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we are talking about North Wilkesboro once again. Now, Adam Stern put out a tweet last night after before the race began, and he says that the renovations cost North of $20 million between a seven-figure spend from Speedway Motorsports and $18 million from a stimulus check from, I think, the American Rescue Plan that was, of course, brought out by, I believe it was Joe Biden, the President of the United States, who brought that stimulus check out. And they put a lot of renovations into North Wilkesboro. They basically kept the seats basically the same, the original grandstands. The only thing that Adam Stern did report is they did power wash grandstands. But they updated the amenities. They kept the old school feel. They kept the racetrack pretty much the same. They did update pit road a little bit, kept like a new school pit road. But basically, a lot of the track ended up remaining the same. And it kind of felt like an old school short track weekend. And I think it was a very successful weekend overall for NASCAR and for SMI overall as well. The event itself was incredible. They did an amazing job. They had a live show, which I thought was really, really cool after the, the All Star Open, the, the heat races. On Saturday, I thought those were really, really cool and really awesome to see. So overall, I really did enjoy that part. That was really, really fun to watch. And overall, love North Wilkesboro as a racetrack. I'm glad they brought it back. I really am happy, and I hope they continue coming here for many times down the road because I absolutely enjoyed the festivities, and it was really, really fun to watch.
And now we're going to go ahead to on to the next story of today's episode as we're going to talk about the bump day and the pull. So while you had the North Bulls or Rican going on, you also had the biggest qualifying session of the year for motorsports, and that was bump day and the pull. So on Sunday, we had the last row shootout. That was between Graham Rahal, Sing Ray Robb, Christian Lungard, and Jack Harvey. It came down to the last minute, and Graham Rahal, for the second thought, he'd be in the Indianapolis 500. Well, as Jack Harvey came to the line and the gun was signaled, we saw Jack Harvey beat Graham Rahal by seven or six one thousandths of a second. And we saw Jack Harvey bump Graham Rahal out of the 2023 Indianapolis 500, pretty much saving Jack Harvey's career. Had Jack Harvey not qualified his way to Indy 500, I'm not sure if Jack Harvey would have made it in. But Ray Hall just absolutely embarrassingly bad in the qualifying sessions. They had just nothing they could do in a situation. The Graham Ray Hall will not race in the 2023 Indianapolis 500. Now let's go to poll day. Alex Flo, oh, of course, went on to win the poll for the 2023 Indianapolis 500, being Renus BK by, believe, <laughs> by six one thousandths of a second, which is really, really close. Alex Flo has come close to winning the Indy 500 many, many times, and he looks to win the Indianapolis 500 once again in 2023. I think he's got a shot to do it. He's going to be a contender. He came close to winning in 2021, finishing second, and then finishing in the top 10 in last year's Indianapolis 500. I think he had a speeding penalty or some sort of penalty on the car that cost him a shot at the victory, but I think Alex Flo does have a very good shot and a possibility to do that in 2023. I'm really looking forward to the Indy 500. It's going to be fun. You never know. It was really fun to watch. I have a head on my head really just watching all the chaos going on. And it was really, really fun to watch the ending of the event, to be honest with you. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about North Wilkesburg and the future of other all-star events. Now, multiple team owners encouraged drivers that being Brad Kozlowski and Denny Hamlin spoke on the future of other North Wilkesboro type events like all-star race events. And Brad Kozlowski says that updates to infrastructure could really help the future of other racetracks that could potentially get other all-star races in the future. Denny Hamlin says that the track service that they were to repave needs to provide good racing going forward, especially with the original repave. I do agree with both drivers, who both are obviously team owners in the sport. I do agree with both drivers. Obviously, I think, like I said, North Wilkesboro was a very, very successful event for NASCAR overall. And I think it provided a really awesome festive event and really good racing overall for the fans. I think both drivers have really good points what they said. And I do need to keep up the infrastructure, make some amenities around the racetrack. Parking was a big issue, though I don't think it, a lot of people were complaining about it as much. Though I will say from what people did say, Parking could have been an issue this weekend, and they do have to work on parking going forward if they are to keep this around. That being said, though, I really did enjoy this event. I do agree both Bragg's Oski and Denny Hill, and I think they both do have some pretty good and pretty solid points, in my honest opinion. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we are talking about bubble walls. Now, we do have a couple of bubble wall stories to talk about in this episode. After the Truck Series race on Saturday, Bubba Walls had a very strong run of course in the Truck Series race, almost winning it, finishing in fifth position and contending up front for the victory overall with the Tricon Garage team after staying out on two tires and playing a really good strategy call. Bubba Walls basically spoke on getting booed, and he basically said at this point that it's basically in every sport and that it's something that he's gotten used to because he's been something he's been used to for a very, very long time. Bubba Walsh, no doubt, is a very, very polarizing driver. However, a lot of the boos are from a lot of the older fans in NASCAR who are not the biggest fans of Bubba Walsh for reasons I'm not going to get into. Bubba Walsh is a driver I've grown up to respect, and Bubba Walsh's performance, especially over the last few weeks, has been really, really exceptional. You look at this. Bubba Walsh only had one finish outside the top 12 in the last six or seven races, and that 28th place finish at Talladega, he was up front contending for the win. He's having one of the best stretches of his career. When we look at Bubba Walls, he's an extremely talented driver. And I think every driver gets booed in NASCAR to an extent. But I think there's a really special, really unfortunate reason why he does get booed out on the racetrack. Bubba, we have a lot of respect for you, dude. You're an incredible driver. You know how to get it done on the racetrack. And we have a lot of respect for you, dude. And we hope you continue to ride a lot of great racing for us. Because, again, you're a talented driver. You know what you're doing on the racetrack. And you're always going to be a driver with a lot of his fans do have respect for. And we have your back. So, nonetheless, he's good to see Bubba Wall speak about it. He handled it very, very well. He's a driver at times, show maturity in the past. And I think Bubba Walls is going to continue to do that in the long term. So really good to see Bubba Wall speak on that and speak on that situation. 
And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Brody Kostecki. Now, according to Adam Stern, it was reported on Friday afternoon that there is a very chance that Brody Kostecki could soon land a drive in the NASCAR Xfinity Series as talks continue with RCR and Joe Gibbs Racing. Now, something very interesting to note, the team that Brody Kostecki drives for, that being, I believe, Arabus Racing, they have a little bit of ties with Richard Childress Racing. Brody Kaseki, for those who do not know, is a driver that comes from the supercar world. It's already been announced that Shane Van Gisbergen, he is going to be driving for Trackhouse Racing with Project 91. So a lot of people thought that there could have been a possibility that Brody Kaseki was going to drive for Project 91 in 2023. Brody Kaseki is a driver who's shown a lot of promise in the supercar series, and as a driver is very talented. And a lot of people compare the V8 supercar somewhat to the NASCAR Cup or the Xfinity Series cars. And I think it would be really, really cool to have Brody Kaseki come from there. We're having the land under down under drivers come over. It's really cool to see, and I really hope Brody Kaseki does race because I think he will be very, very competitive. My question would be, what potential track could Brody Kaseki drive at? Well, there are a couple potential possibilities for Brody Kaseki. There's a racetrack course like Portland Raceway. The ninth, well, Portland may not be available unless they get out of fourth Joe Gibbs Racing Car because Maya Sanders there. What about the Charlotte Roval? I don't even think the Charlotte Roval anyone's got that ticketed, so that could be a potential possibility. What if they bring the third car for RCR? Obviously, RCR does have that three car. I know that Richard has kind of reserved that car for basically his family or the Earnhardt family. But what if they do have an exception and Brody Kaseki could drive there? It's going to be very interesting to see what ride Brody Kaseki does end up driving for. I know he's been trying to get into NASCAR for the last few weeks. And I last year's, I should say, really since last year, we heard Rumless. He wanted to get in the sport. And I really do hope we get to see him come into the sport in the foreseeable future because he deserves a shot at it. I really hope he gets a chance to race in it. And nonetheless, hopefully, we do get to see him have a shot to run in NASCAR because I think it'd be really good for the sport if he got the opportunity. Do I think he's going to come to NASCAR? I think the potential is up there. I think there's a really good chance it could end up happening. And I do hope we get to see him come into the sport in the foreseeable future and race because it'd be really good for the sport. Hopefully, he gets the opportunity and the shot to come and race in NASCAR. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Kyle Larson. Before the festivities began for NASCAR, Kyle Larson spoke to the media, I believe, on Saturday afternoon, and he spoke on running the 2024 Indianapolis 500. And he called the drivers run the Indy 500 crazy for the high speeds they're running, but he also noted that he basically calls himself crazy. He's called himself crazy once he gets to the Indianapolis 500. Kyle Larson will be trying to do something that has not been done since 2001 and with Tony Stewart accomplished, by the way, and that is complete the double. Kyle Larson will be attempting to complete the double. Kyle Larson, of course, will be driving, I believe, the five or the six car for Aaron McLaren. And Kyle Larson is going to be in a very competitive car. Aaron McLaren has been a team, especially this year, that has shown pace, and they've been a team that has been competing to win the Indy 500. And they're one of the front runners that could win the Indy 500 in 2023. And I think Kyle Larson definitely has a really good chance and a really good shot and possibility of winning the 2023 Indianapolis 5, 24 Indianapolis 5, or 2025. Because remember, it's not a one-year deal. It's a two-year deal for Kyle Larson. So he's going to have two shots and two possibilities of winning the Indy 500. And like I said, I think his chances are really, really high to win the Indianapolis 500. He's going to be in a fast car. I think he's going to be extremely competitive, and I think that he is going to have a really good shot. He's been there. I think he's going to be waving the green flag for the Indy 500 next week or this Sunday, so I think he's going to be very competitive. I think he's going to be really strong, really, really fast, and I think he's going to have a really good opportunity and a shot to get the victory. Looking forward to it. Really excited about it. Really pumped up for next year, and I'm glad to see Kyle Larson do it, and I think he can win the Indy 500 in 2024 or 2025. I think he's going to have a really good shot to get it done. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we are talking about Indianapolis Raceway Park. Now, I've already talked about it in this episode, and because Kyle Larson's run the 2024 Indianapolis 500, which, of course, he'll be doing qualifying during that time when the all race is going on that day, most likely, which could happen at North Wilkes Pro. Kyle Larson is actually saying, kind of joked about it a little bit, but he's kind of calling for the potential possibility of bringing the All-Star Race to Indianapolis Raceway Park in 2024 to accommodate for him. Honestly, if they can fix the short track package a little bit, because that definitely needs some work on for sure, 
I definitely think this would be a really good move. Indianapolis Raceway Park is not that far from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's like, I think, 10 or 15 minutes, something like that, away from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So I think it would definitely make a lot of sense for them to bring Indianapolis Raceway Park in 2024. Will that happen to accommodate Kyle Larson? I'm not entirely sure, but that's something NASCAR could definitely be looking at. Obviously, there's other tracks that NASCAR could go to for the All-Star Race in the future. They could go to Rocky and Speedway. Rocky and definitely is a potential possibility of coming back in 2024. We've heard the Romans and Rivers behind the scenes that Rocky and they're trying to make a comeback. There's been reports the track is ready to go, and that track's potential return. Obviously, Indianapolis Raceway Park did make its return for the Truck Series in 2022, and they're going to be back there in 2023. But I think a lot of fans would love to see the Cup Series run at IRP. I think a lot of fans would be clamoring for that to have a points paying race. I think it'd be a really good move to make North Books or maybe a points paying race and maybe move the IRP for next year. I think it'd be a really good move. That could be a potential possible move that we could see, but we're going to have to wait and see if they decide to do it. But I think the chances are definitely there for them to potentially do it in 2024. But we're going to have to wait and see what happens. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about wet weather tires. On Saturday during the All-Star Heat races, for the first time in NASCAR Cup Series history, we saw racing with damp or wet weather tires. And drivers in the industry responded to them using the wet weather tires. Ryan Blaney said that he was really shocked by how much grip he had with the wet weather tires. Was surprised that basically the wet weather tires had more grip than the tires. They said, granted, that the longer it ran, ran when the tires started squealing off, it started getting really, really bad. But he said he was really shocked with the grip. Chase Elliott also says the tires felt fine to him. He said they were kind of falling off a little bit, but he said the tires felt completely fine. NASCAR's uh, executive on the good year, that being Gray Sucker, did say that there's a potential possibility in speaking to the media on Sunday that they could use even wetter wet tire and could run it at more tracks in the future. Obviously, this has been an option up on the table, and the reason they ran wet weather tires is because of the damp, basically the sprinkles and the mist that was going around on the racetrack. The tires are meant to be run basically in wet conditions. They're not meant to be basically run during the rain, but they're meant to be done during wet conditions. There's obviously going to be a new tire in New Hampshire. They kind of confirm that there's going to be a new tire at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. But personally, I would definitely be okay with them running a wet weather tire in a lot of other tracks, maybe at some of these intermediate tracks, something they can do about that. And basically, what this meant for the wet weather tires is a dry track a little bit quicker, and you don't have to take uh, forever to get the track going, especially with North Bulks where you can't even really use jet dryers. This is why the option of wet weather tires really comes into play. And personally, I would be definitely okay with them running wet weather tires at a lot of other racetracks. I think it'd make a lot of sense. I think it'd be a really cool move if they did decide to do it at a lot of other facilities and a lot of other racetracks. And I really do hope we get to see this once again at other racetracks going forward. I know it's at the short tracks and road courses, but I think it's really cool to see that they tested it out. The racing actually was not too bad. Even Chase Lady said during basically said, let's put them on if the racing's not good at the all-star race and the racing could have definitely been better for the all-star race. Nonetheless, so it's interesting to hear, and maybe that could be a potential possibility going forward that they use even a wet water tire and use it at other racetracks. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we are talking about Dean Thompson and Haley Deegan. Now, if you watched an NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race on Saturday afternoon, you saw the issues between Dean Thompson and Haley Deegan. So near the end of stage three, I think in the second half of the race, about 60 laps to go, Haley Deegan unfortunately made a big mistake, went too high up in the corner, just missed the corner completely, and she got in Dean Thompson, crashing Dean Thompson out of the race, and unfortunately collecting Chris Wright. Dean Thompson was not very happy after the race, and he basically said, basically said the truck series is completely dirty, calling out a lot of drivers for the dirty racing, and Raj Groove also kind of reiterated the same points that Dean Thompson had. And Dean Thompson, you could tell, was very upset and very frustrated. Now, to Haley Deegan's defense, Dean Thompson was kind of all over the place in the truck series. But Dean, to be fair, is also not wrong. The truck series has gone downhill with the type of racing we have seen. We've seen a lot of dirty racing out on the racetrack and a lot of drivers who just cannot seem to get out of their heads and race way too aggressive out on the racetrack. And it definitely can be very frustrating to watch as a fan. Just way over aggressiveness and the carelessness out on the racetrack for many of these drivers in this series. 
But Dean Thompson also was a little bit all over the place. I think he caused an incident earlier in the race. He came down, I think, maybe on Johnny Sauter. I'm not entirely sure. But he's kind of all over the place in the race a little bit as well. But going back and talking about Haley Deegan, she easily made a mistake, and she should definitely know better. She usually doesn't make mistakes. Usually, she's caught up in someone else's mess. So to see her get, make cause a mess was definitely really, really frustrating to watch because Haley Deegan definitely has to do a lot better. She cannot be making those same mistakes out on the racetrack because it's going to cost her good runs and cost her a shot at potentially making the playoffs. She did come back to finish 20th, which is really good. But still, she cannot be making those mistakes on the racetrack. It's just she knows better than that. She's done better than that at times, and she should definitely know better than what they, they saw. So definitely frustrating for her part. I feel bad for Dean Thompson. I know he's making mistakes and kind of getting a little bit all over the place, but it really was not his fault what ended up happening. And you can tell he was really upset, almost in tears, almost crying in the interview. And just the truck series, though, I do agree, has become kind of a war zone out on the racetrack, and I hope it gets changed and can get better in the future. And now we're going ahead on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Michael Medell versus Ty Gibbs. Now, if you watch the All-Star Open, Michael Medell was the star of the show. He was making three wide moves and making passes up on the outside. Ty Gibbs, unfortunately, cost Michael Medell a shot at a getting into the All-Star race because Michael Medell was in position to potentially make it in the All-Star event. So in the later stages of the race, I think about 50 laps into the race, when he got to the restart, Ty Gibbs got a run to the inside of Michael Medell and forced Michael Medell up into the racetrack. And unfortunately, Justin Haley and Michael Medell ended up crashing. Michael Medell was not very happy. He said, <clears throat> fix up this race car. I'm going to cost this kid a shot and an opportunity. And near the end of the race, with about 20 or 30 laps to go, we saw the retaliation from Michael Medell, which really was an effective retaliation, but he kind of forced Ty Gibbs into the inside wall, and then Ty Gibbs went up the racetrack and handed the lead to Josh Berry. Credit Ty Gibbs, though, he ended up finishing second, and we saw him basically lose to Josh Berry, but Josh Berry won, and Ty Gibbs is able to advance. Now, I do want to give a little props to Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs did not completely, has not really lost his composure a lot this year. This was really the first mistake <clears throat> that he's really first time this year that Ty Gibbs has kind of gotten into drivers and done really something that kind of cost him a shot because Michael Medell kind of retaliated. And Michael Medell also kind of said he kind of wished he retaliated and forced him into the barrels, which is a little questionable move by Michael Medell in my opinion, but I understand Michael Medell's frustration. Michael Medell did have every right and every right to be frustrated with Ty Gibbs because Ty Gibbs cost him a shot. Michael Medell had a really good car. He was star of the show. And everyone was cheering for Michael Medell <clears throat> to have a really good run because Michael Medell has, is a driver who's kind of getting near to the end of his career. I don't know how much longer Michael Medell is going to race, but he wants to make it to the All-Star race. And he says he should have been in the All-Star event. And I get Michael Medell's frustration. Now, push him in the tire barriers, a little questionable. But again, I do want to, again, give praise to Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs handled it himself. He didn't wreck Josh Berry for the win. He did make a mistake. But I can tell you that Ty Gibbs is maturing in front of our eyes. He's a young driver. He's getting better. He is maturing. And I hope he can continue that maturation because he definitely is a driver that could carry the sport or do great things and win a lot of races. And I hope he can continue maturing as a race car driver going forward. But we all understand the frustration from Michael McDowell. You get it? I get the frustration. And I completely understand the frustration from Michael McDowell. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we are talking about Bubba Walsh. Now, Bubba Walsh has been basically under the spotlight for the last day or two for some reasons we're not really going to sadly get into. But unfortunately, Bubba Walsh had some things said on the radio that just were not great. And according to Jim Utter, NASCAR security is investigating comments directed towards Bubba Walsh. Now, those radios are not supposed to be picked up by the fans. However, somehow a couple fans got on the radio of Bubba Walls, and they were just saying some things that were really, really uncalled for and completely unacceptable in this sport. Now, Bubba Walls did give the middle finger to the TV, but I think that was more toward the frustration of the fans that spoke to him on the radio. I think it's flipping off those fans that got onto his radio. Those kind of comments are uncalled for and completely unacceptable. It's a shame, too, because Bubba Walls has been performing very, very well. And from what I've heard from a lot of people, I've never met Bubba Walls personally, but from what I know from a lot of people, Bubba Walls is, seems like is a really, really nice guy. And he's a driver who's informing out on the racetrack. He has to put up with a lot of backlash 
especially over the last couple of years. It frustrates me that this guy goes through so much crap and it's disappointing to see because Bubba Walls, like I said, he's a better driver. He's earned every ride he's gotten into and is having one of the best stretches of his NASCAR Cup Series career. And I wish we could focus on that and focus on the great performances Bubba Wallace has had. It sucks that we got to go through this every week, it seems like. He's performing really, really good. Everyone's got to move the goalposts with this guy. But I want to say, Bubba, if you ever end up watching this video, my guy, every one of these fans has your back no matter what, and we're going to support you no matter what. I hope you can win some races this year. You can win a multiple races. Because I think Bubba Wallace has the potential this year, especially if how fast 20 year 11 has been. And they've been quicker this year at this point than they were last year. I think Bubba Wallace is due for a few wins, and I think he's going to win a few races. And not going to lie, Bubba Wallace was definitely very, very entertaining at the All-Star race with how he was handling himself. So it was very fun to watch. I love how Bubba Wallace handled himself. He showed a lot of great stuff. He was fun to listen to, fun to watch. I know a lot of fans have their opinions on Bubba, and sometimes I get get it, so the rim of the reasons why, but the same token, same time, Bubba Wallace doesn't deserve a lot of the backlash that he got. It was just unacceptable, uncalled for, in my honest opinion, and that cannot happen in this sport, and it has to change very, very quickly, in my honest opinion. We're in 2023. Things have to change. Bubba Walls is absolutely welcome in the sport, and we welcome Bubba Walls in the sport with open arms. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we are talking about the 2024 schedule. Now, we just had the North Wilkes or weekend, and Marcus Smith was asked questions about the 2024 schedule. Well, Marcus Smith responded, and he says that SMI is still talking with NASCAR about the 2024 schedule. But North Wilkes or returning is definitely on his mind of getting this racetrack back. He really loved the energy around the racetrack. And he also said that he believes that North Wilkesboro should not be repaid. You think about the event itself, about 2024 and North Wilkesboro. And if you want my honest opinion, I believe that North Wilkesboro should be a points paying race in 2024. Was the also race the most exciting race in the world? No, absolutely not. But that is not a track problem. That is a car problem. The next-gen car definitely needs to be worked on because one thing I really enjoyed about this race is the cars sliding around. That was really, really fun to watch. Yes, it was very, very difficult to pass, and Kyle Larson put on a dominating clinic. But if you go back to some of those old-school short track races, we saw from time to time again drivers dominate, and those races were not always the most exciting. And the fans, I know, probably were frustrated at the end that there wasn't much going on. But you're going to have that at times where drivers are just going to dominate and put on dominating clinics. That sometimes is just going to happen, unfortunately. I know a lot of fans, us fans sometimes don't like that, but you're going to have domination. But going back and talking about North Wilkesboro, if it should be a points pain race next year and 400 laps, drivers are advocating for it. I hope they can fix a car by that time, but this track absolutely deserves a points pain race once again, and we better not leave this racetrack. The atmosphere, from what I heard, was absolutely electric, absolutely incredible. Fans were there. The largest crowd I've ever seen for a practice session. You look at the crowd for the practice and qualifying sessions. I went to Gateway last year and watched a qualifying session. Don't get me wrong. There was a lot of crowd for those sessions, but the crowd for North Wilkes was absolutely electric and absolutely outstanding. So I absolutely enjoyed that part of it. And like I said, I really hope North Wilkes Bro comes back on the schedule next year. It needs to happen. I want North Wilkes to be a points paying race in 2023. I'm glad they're talking about it because it absolutely 100% Deserves a shot and an opportunity to be a points paying race in 2024. I hope it does happen because it deserves a shot and opportunity to be a points paying race in 2024. It better be because it better be back on the schedule in 2024 because it deserves a points paying race. And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're going to talk about the TV deal. Now, we do have a couple stories in regards to the TV deal to discuss. And we'll talk about the Xfinity series in regards to this in a later portion of this episode. But according to Adam Stern, John Allen reports that NASCAR is tracking toward a significant increase over the average annual value of its current media rights deal. According to the current deal, it's $820 or $20 million per year by creating the new digital package and getting Fox and NBC to renew. Now, according to the article as well, when you do read it, the deal is could have handshake deal done by as early as July 4th. So not far down the road, this deal could end up being done. This is really, really huge that Fox and NBC could be returning in 2025. This would be the first time in NASCAR history that the same two partners that were on the current deal, which went from 2015 to 2024, this could be the first time it's ever happened where back-to-back -back deals could happen. Now, the question is going to be, 
how long is this TV deal going to end up being? Well, it sounds like this deal could be another long-term deal, maybe at least eight to 10 years. So maybe from 2025 to 2032. And the fact that they're talking about increasing the money, that is really, really huge for these teams. Because if they increase the per the money that's coming in, which teams really, really want, especially with the teams asking for the charter system to stick around long-term, the teams are asking for a lot more money. And if you give them more TV money and a bigger purse of the pie and a piece of the pie, that is going to be really, really good for these teams. You get to have more teams show up to NASCAR, and you're going to have potential possibility of drivers getting paid more. And this helps those teams really discover the drivers that they deserve, believe, have a shot and an opportunity. And I think it's going to be interesting to watch and see what happens. If this deal is likely going to be done within the next month. NASCAR is already talking to the teams. They've kind of stopped talking about this. is a really important note for the charter agreement. They need to agree to a revenue deal. They're not talking to everybody collectively. They're going individually to teams to talk about the upcoming TV deal. <clears throat> but personally, I really do believe that that's a really good decision. That they bring in Fox NBC. Yes, Fox need to have some major changes. they got to change their broadcast up because Fox's coverage hasn't been that greatest, in my opinion, and they do need to change it up. NBC, though, they're in the right direction. They've got some things they need to do. Personally, I'd hire Carl Edwards and put him in the booth. If you wanted my booth for NBC in 2025, I'd say have Alan Best will come back if they could bring him back. I think Rick Allen's done a good job. But bring Alan Best back to NBC, have Dale Jr., and have Carl Edwards. That would be a really strong NBC booth. That would be my dream NBC booth, and I think that would be a really, really good booth. I know ESPN in the past have been in conversation to be part of the NASCAR deal, but it sounds like that Fox and NBC are going to renew. And personally, I hope that there's more races on broadcast. That's another thing. As many races for both networks that they can do, put as many races on broadcast TV as possible. It needs to happen. I really hope it happens. And I think the chance of it definitely happening could happen very, very soon. It's going to be very interesting to watch as time goes on when it comes to this story, but it'll be a story we're going to be following very, very close. And it'll be a story to watch going forward. Now we're going to jump on to the first of three major stories in today's episode as we're talking about Alex Bowman. Now, Bob Pock is always for every single NASCAR Cup Series race. He says this thing called the business with Bob. And according to him, he says that Alex Bowman could potentially return for the Coke 600 this weekend. Obviously, Alex Bowman has been out for the last year or four weeks to a broken back and an L3 vertebrae fracture. Now, Alex Bowman did speak to the media at Charlotte. He didn't really have a timetable of when he was going to officially return. But like Bob mentioned, he says there's a really good potential possibility of Alex Bowman returning at the Coke 600. Now, Alex Bowman has technically missed the last four races, three points pain races, and of course, the past All-Star event where Josh Berry has been the substitute driver. Now, Alex Bowman is currently five points below the cutoff line, so he's not really in a terrible position. When it is when it comes to being in the cutoff line, he's not really in a bad position right now. So if he even loses another race, so this could be a really poor race to come back to, that's something to watch. Now, could Alex Bowman potentially return this week? Yes. The question is going to be how would he perform when he would return because his back is really the key thing. He says some of the normal things in his life that he does, it does still hurt. That's what he said at Darlington last week. And I would not be surprised or shocked in the slightest if Henry Motorsports does decide to go ahead and Josh Berry as a relief driver potentially, and Bowman might not even finish the race. Now, if Josh Berry is to win that NASCAR Cup Series race, that would not lock Alex Bowman into the playoffs because Alex Bowman would have to have a relief driver. They changed those rules during this offseason, and that's a new rule that really came into effect. I do agree with that rule, by the way. A relief driver should not be able to help you get into the playoffs. The question is going to be, does he return? Like I said, I think that the chances are definitely really, really high. Because, again, it is past that three or four-week timetable. We're likely going to know by the end of this week, sometime probably Tuesday or Wednesday, we're probably going to get to know if he's going to return or not. If he doesn't return this weekend, no, Charlotte, when could he return? Well, I think there's a couple of potential really big possibilities. First one could be a gateway. Gateway, of course, my hometown track. <clears throat> that track doesn't require as much. It's not as long of a race. It's only 260 laps. So that would be a little bit of a shorter race, and that would not be out of the realm of possibility of returning there. You've also had other tracks after that. Actually, also could return after Sonoma. Maybe the race after Sonoma returns at Nashville. I'll have two weeks to rest there. The latest I see him coming back is Nashville. The earliest I see him coming back is a Coke 600. But I think regardless, he'll be back in the next few weeks. We all want Alex Bowman to return. We're wishing him health. I don't want him to rush his way back in. But I think a lot of his fans do miss Bubba Walls. Not Bubba Walls. 
Alex Bowman being on the racetrack. So I think Bowman is going to have a shot <coughs> of returning really, really soon. I think it's going to be fun to watch when he does come back. He's only five points below. If he does come back, he just has to make up a few points. I think the question is going to be, will his performance dip a little bit because of the injury? That's going to be one thing to watch when he does return. But it's going to be very interesting to watch to see what happens in regards to that. We'll be keeping an eye on the story. We'll officially know here very, very soon. Within the next couple of days, we should know if Alex Bowman is returning. Maybe you know by today. Who knows at this point? But hopefully in the not so distant future, we find out if Alex Bowman is going to return. We're going to know here very, very soon. We'll be keeping an eye on the story. And we'll update the story as time goes on when they do decide to officially reveal if, Bo if Alex Bowman is going to be returning or not to the NASCAR Cup Series this upcoming weekend for the Coke 600. And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the next major story in today's episode as we are talking about Amazon. Now, we've talked a little bit about the TV deal. One thing I did not mention was about the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Let's talk about that. So, a coroner report that came out Saturday evening, Amazon wants to get into the business with NASCAR and is considered to be in the driver's seat to land an exclusive streaming package from 2025. According to the reports that have come out very recently, the NASCAR Xfinity Series could be exclusively on Amazon in 2025 as a streaming partner. And there are also potential possibly the Cup could have a midsummer package on Amazon as well. Very similar to what TNT did back in the mid to late, basically the mid 2000s, all the way up to the mid 2010s. This is very, very interesting. Now, a few days ago, before all this kind of started coming out about Amazon, I really was not for the move of moving the Xfinity series to full streaming. I just think, yes, streaming has become very, very prevalent, starting to become more and more prevalent, and a few years down the road, it's going to become more and more prevalent. But I'm not a big fan of moving exclusive streaming because a lot of people still have cable. Yes, cable is dying, and streaming, like I said, has become more prevalent, but I was the biggest fan of them moving it. However, if it is Amazon that they're moving it there, I'm a little more for it. And we've heard Tommy Jones, kind of Joe Martins, who is an owner in the Xfinity Series, kind of give his points. I do trust with Tommy Joe Martins saying, so I'm a little bit more for it now than against it. Especially if this means less commercials, which I'm completely for that, in, all, in my opinion. Less commercials, I think, is better completely for everybody. And also the fact that more people are going to be on streaming in the next few years. They're averaging on Amazon about 10 million new viewers. Yes, we've seen a huge drop in viewership for Monday Night Football or Thursday Night Football, but let's be honest, it's probably because some of the games that ended up playing there. And we've seen, I think it could be very, very successful because I think Amazon is becoming more and more prevalent. Now, talking about the midsummer package <clears throat> for 2025, when it does come to potential of the Cup Series being on Amazon, this would be overall a pretty good move long term. Because I will say this, NASCAR does have to get with the times. Streaming, like I said, is becoming very, very prevalent across this country. And a few races, not a full season, but a few Cup Series races, especially during the midsummer, when let's be honest, some of those races do will basically not bring a lot of the viewership in, not bring a lot of the draw the viewership in, because they kind of are in the middle of the summer, like with TNT. The only race is kind of in the middle of the summer that you gotta have to think about maybe is Chicago, but I don't know, think even know if Chicago Street Courts is gonna be back after the 2000. In 23 season, there's a lot of talk it could be a one and done deal. Another track, maybe like a Chicago, could come in in maybe 2024, or another track like Road America could come back in 2024. They got a better at backup plans for 2024 because I don't know if there's going to be a race at Chicago in 2024. But it's going to be very interesting to watch. But going to Amazon, yeah, I'm definitely for that. Amazon is definitely growing here in the United States very, very rapidly and very, very quickly. And I think. For me, I'd be okay with it. Again, I wasn't for it at first. And again, Xfinity Series going exclusively. I don't know if that can said that's the greatest move in the world because a lot of fans who watch there. They got a million viewers on Fox. Kind of the worst week to kind of report that considering the Xfinity Series had their biggest ratings draw so far, which was on the Fox network. But it's no secret, like I said, that cable is definitely going away. NASCAR definitely does, like I said, have to get with the times. Going exclusive may not be the greatest idea at first. But I think, especially if the talk about more money coming into play, I think that that actually will benefit the teams a little bit more and will help them out just a little bit. So it is going to be very interesting to see what happens in regards to this going forward. I think it will be announced very, very soon because, again, they're expecting to have a TV deal done here within the next month. I've already talked about it a little bit ago in this video. They're expecting to have a deal done by July 4th. I think Amazon will be joining NASCAR as a TV partner. So it'll be Fox for the first part of the year. It sounds like Fox is going to take a lot of the beginning of the year. 
NBC will finish the season. I don't think any race will be on USA. I think NBC will probably take a majority of the races on their main network. Yes, there might be some games they have to play rolling out, but I don't think things will go to USA. And then Amazon will come to play. And I think long term, we're going to see NASCAR fully to Amazon. And there's also talk, too, the Xfinity Series may not even have Xfinity as a sponsor after 2024 because their deal ends after 2024. So maybe the Xfinity Series will be called the NASCAR Amazon Series, which is definitely very, very interesting. But in all seriousness and all honesty, I think this will be a good move long term. Short term might be a short term loss, but it might be in the long term a long-term gain for everybody. And it could be a huge benefactor for the teams and stuff. And get rid, rid of the commercials. That's another thing. Getting rid of the commercials. Even though I'd be a fan of simulcasting, getting rid of the commercials, huge key thing for me. Everyone's been doing that. And I think the product has not better on TV there. And I think we see a pretty good product. And maybe we see a different group of people like an Alan Bestwick probably commentate some of those races and bring Alan Besson back in the sport, or Dale Jr. Carl Levers on that group, that would be very, very interesting and pretty exciting. So we'll see what happens in regards to that. But it sounds like Amazon's in the driver's seat and the front runner if they do return, and I honestly would definitely be for that. And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the final major story of today's episode as we're talking about Kurt Busch once again. Now, we've talked about Kurt Busch on this channel a lot, especially over the last few weeks. And a lot of it has to do with Kurt Busch. And he's saying and spoke to Jerry Jordan from KickingTheTires.net during basically the break for basically, I think, the All-Star heat race, if I'm not mistaken, or after the heat race had concluded. And basically, he says, I don't think Kurt Busch is never going to get back behind the wheel. I don't know when he's going to get back behind the wheel, but he's hoping to return really, really soon. Kurt Busch has basically been out for almost a year now. The last time Kurt Busch raced in the NASCAR Cup Series, the last race he competed in, I believe, was in New Hampshire, and he finished in the top five in 2022. He was qualifying, made it to the final round shootout in qualifying at Pocono, and backed it into the outside wall. Had a lot of injury, basically a lot of wrecks he already been part of before, and with a much older age, Kurt Busch hits the outside wall and unfortunately suffers concussion-like symptoms, and sadly sounds like it was a full-on concussion. And Kurt Busch has not been medically cleared by doctors yet to return to the racetrack. Kurt Busch has said that the recovery has been going very, very well, and it sounds like he could be returning sooner before we know it. And he is hoping to return to the NASCAR Cup Series in the foreseeable future. Now, when do I think... Now, the big thing for me is, first thing I want to say, is while I do want Kurt Busch to get back as soon as possible, I also want Kurt Busch to be very, very smart with getting back to the racetrack. And I think Kurt Busch has been a lot smarter when it comes to this kind of stuff. He's been taking care of his health. He's been following the doctor's guidelines from the beginning. And he's been doing a fantastic job when it does come to that. So he needs to make sure that that is the first thing that he does focus on. But the question is, when could Kurt Busch return if he is a return? Well, we know that Kurt Busch wants to return in 2023. So there's a couple potential possibilities that I can see Kurt Busch returning in 2023 because we know that they have a third car that is available. The 6-7 car, which Travis Toronto ran for, and obviously there is, they still think that they're going to run that third car in 2023, and that car is obviously reserved for Kurt Busch. Now, I would love to see him drop, change it to 97 because that's Kurt Busch's first number in NASCAR. i like to see them change it and put that as a number <clears throat> that they end up using instead of the 67. But I think the first potential possibility of him returning could be the Chicago Street Course in about a month from now. Kurt Busch has been really working with 2311 to promote that event. He's been out there promoting the Chicago event. He's a big fan of Chicago, big fan of Chicago Cubs, as I'm really promoting that event. It would be really cool for Kurt Busch to have a shot at returning at that race. That could be the first potential race that he returns to. The second track that Kurt Busch could return to is maybe Las Vegas. Las Vegas is a racetrack that Kurt Busch is his hometown. He won there back in 2020, unfortunately, with no fans there. But Kurt Busch has won in Las Vegas now, and I'd love to see him have a potential possibility of coming back there. And the third potential possibility for a return for Kurt Busch could be maybe at the Southern 500. Kurt Busch has won the race at Darlington and Watkins Glen. He said that publicly back last year. The Darlington and Watkins Glen are two tracks he really wants to race at. So that could be two more racetracks that we could definitely see Kurt Busch make a return. Yes, he's won a Watkins Glen in the Xfinity Series, but he said publicly that he wants to win there in the NASCAR Cup Series. So do I think Kurt Busch will return in 2023? Yes, I think Kurt Busch is going to return to NASCAR in 2023. The question is, will, what is health is going to be the biggest factor, though. But he really wants to return. I think a lot of those fans, when he hits announced he returns, I think a lot of his fans 
are going to be very, very happy and very excited about that. Yes, his health and safety is more a bit, absolutely the number one priority, but I think a lot of us do miss Kurt Busch being behind the wheel. It's been now over a year since he won his last NASCAR Cup Series race, that coming in Kansas, and I think Kurt Busch, if, even if him being out for a year, he could probably figure out this car really, really quick, and even with the health issues, I think he could be very, very fast and very, very quick. <laughs> so hopefully he can return in 2023 and then come back for some more races in 2024. But like I said, the number one biggest priority for him is health and safety and getting back there. And let's be honest, he's been doing a killer job in other things he's been doing inside the sport. He's been consoling 2311 racing. And you look at the performance of Bubba Walls and Tyler Reddick. They both been forming really, really good. Tyler Reddick won a Coda, and it was really emotional in the booth. That was his car, and Tyler Reddick's done a good job in it. And Bubba Walls having one of the best stretches of his NASCAR Cup Series career currently at the moment. And he commentated some Fox races. And let's be honest, in the select Fox races that he commentated, he did a killer and a fantastic job. And maybe he comes and commentates the Cup Race at Gateway. That would be really, really cool to watch, and I think it would be really, really fun. So it's going to be interesting to watch <coughs> to see what happens in regards to that. But I really hope Kurt Busch can return soon. He's hoping to return soon, and maybe he'll return to the NASCAR Cup Series in the foreseeable future. Kurt, we miss you, dude, and hope you get back to the racetrack very, very soon. So, that is going to be it for today's NASCAR news and motorsports news video. I want to thank guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and the channel notifications on so you know if I win a video that does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support my Patreon as well. Link in the description below with that, and comment your thoughts below on today's video. When do you think Kurt Busch is going to return? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And what are your thoughts about the Amazon potentially picking up this deal for NASCAR in 2025? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Later today on the channel, we're going to have Truck Series race picks for Charlotte. Then tomorrow on the channel, we're going to have Indy 500 picks, Xfinity Series race picks, and maybe a third video on the channel. We're going to have to wait and see. Then on Wednesday, we'll have a NASCAR news video on the channel. We might have the Indy 500 starting lineup coming out later in the evening as well. Then on Thursday, we're going to have Cup Series race picks for the Coke 600. And then throughout the rest of the week, we've got a lot of content on the way dropping. Many, many videos coming. Got some big products on the way as well. And I cannot wait to share them with you all. So anyways... Like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for more awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. We're trying to reach 2,500 subscribers by the end of the year. If you enjoyed today's video and you're new, make sure to subscribe. So see you guys for more awesome content on the channel, a lot of stuff on the way. Take care, everybody.